Welcome to the session Building Consistent UI Suitable for High DPI with Vector Images and Styles. I abbreviated the title a little bit to the essentials, but what is given in the official schedule is still valid. My name is Holger Flick, and let me start with introducing myself. I have been a Delphi developer since 1996 and became really active in the community by visiting conferences and even speaking on conferences in 2004. Next to my studies in Germany, I also worked for Borland and later Code Gear. And uh, in 2006, I was awarded the diploma in computer science in Dortmund. And in 2011, I was awarded the PhD in engineering in Germany as well. And in 2016, after, well, 20 years working with Delphi, I was awarded the MVP award from Embarcadero and I'm, I have been an MVP ever since. And since 2017, I cooperate with TMS Software and became their chief evangelist, doing video tutorials, also publishing books, and also, like today, talk on conferences, be it online or in person. Finally, in 2019, I moved to the United States of America and created my own company called Flix Engineering, which is available um, for software development and software consulting, or if you need training of any sort. The focus of this talk, obviously, Embarcadero, Red Studio, with Delphi personality, and everything is targeted at the VCL framework, which, in my opinion, still is the best framework to build your desktop applications. I'll start by giving the requirements for desktop applications that have not been a consideration years ago. And I'll also focus on the fact what you need to consider as a VCL developer when considering high DPI. I'll close off this session by giving demonstrations using vector images and styles. And these two parts will also introduce third-party controls by TMS software that make development with the VCL in order to build high DPI aware applications even easier. So when I started in Delphi back in the day, I would have been glad to have a 480p display. Mine was even less pixels in the beginning. So the development that we see today is that we have displays with more and more resolution and they also get bigger, much bigger than we thought it would be possible back in the day when Delphi started off. The VCL gives us pretty good solutions to handle different resolutions. You can group controls, you have the owner concept for those groups, and then you can use alignment like AL top, bottom, left, right, client, and you can use anchors and margins. So you're really able to build user interfaces that adapt to the resolution used. That was actually what made the VCL so great. You could build a quick user interface without paying any consideration to this, but still you were also able to build a user interface that adapted to different display resolutions. Nowadays we have one big new requirement that displays have different pixel density. And pixel density is measured in dots per inch DPI, and that expresses how many pixels a display uses on an inch. And that is actually something a lot of people completely ignore when they develop application nowadays. The number one reason for that is that some programming languages or the user interface frameworks do not provide a solution for this. The VCL, of course, provides a solution and it even provides multiple solutions because Microsoft on the Windows operating system changed the way how they approached the subject. However, there's still quite a lot of applications that do not support high DPI and the consequences are rather visible. If you ever work on a high density display and you open up an application that is not written for such a display, most likely all the images and all the text and everything is not lining up nicely and it's very, very small. Everything in the Delphi form designer is designed at 96 DPI. That is your base. That is what Windows considers 100%. Anything that has higher density than 96 DPI is called high DPI. 
So if you go out and buy a Surface tablet today, it will most likely have a much higher density than 96 DPI. You can see this pretty easily if you open up the properties of your display and you see on the scale and layout, you see like something like 150% recommended. On my Surface tablet, it even says 200% recommended. The 150% is kind of hard to imagine. What it means is that in order to comply with the setting that Windows has with 150%, all your images that are inside of your application have to be drawn differently. It means, for example, that an image with 32 times 32 pixels will stay at 32 times 32 pixels at 100%. However, the same image will be drawn with 24 times 24 pixels at 150%. So what you need to do as a developer, or you need to resize your image of 32 pixels to 32 times 1.5 in order for it to be drawn as 32 times 32 on the 150% display. Otherwise, the image will always be drawn smaller. So the new requirement that you will always have is you need to resize your images, you need to resize your fonts, and you need to make changes to measurements. And all of this needs to take the display that your form is shown on into consideration. Because now imagine this, there's a lot of people out there that have multiple displays, and these displays can have different densities. Thankfully, with the VCL, this is easy to do. You need to determine the DPI of the display, and you also need to use events when forms are moved between displays. And then, if you have both those things, you also need to make sure that you need to calculate your measurements with a factor based on the DPI. For fonts, this is really easy, and they're based on vectors. So you can resize a font any way you want, it is always going to be crystal sharp. Back in the day, we had bitmap fonts, which would have made this a lot more difficult. And that is actually where we're coming to the big topic of bitmaps, or for Delphi developers, the tbitmap class. Apart from the fact that if you use third-party controls, you need to make sure that these third-party controls support high DPI, you yourself need to make sure that your bitmaps take into consideration on which display they are drawn. With Delphi Rio, Embarcadero introduced T-Virtual Image List. It's a special image list that is based on a collection of images that you provide, and the image list will internally recalculate the size of all the images that are stored on the list. That means if the image list realizes that you have a display at 200% and all your images inside of the image collection are 32 times 32 pixel images, it'll resize those images for you so that they will still look like 32 times 32 images when drawn, even though internally, because it's at 200%, a 64 times 64 image is being used. And this is exactly the problem when it comes to bitmaps. If you have a bitmap and this is the 100%, and you double it, for example, from 32 pixels to 64 pixels, it's already getting a little bit blurry. But guess what? There's even higher density displays where it will look like this. And that is something you would not call a good user experience anymore. So if you use a vector where each of the elements of the image are being described using lines and other shapes on a coordinate system, you see that you can still create perfect image no matter the density of the display because this image can be calculated four times eight times and 16 times to the size it will always be crystal clear and sharp let's look how you can get the information of the dpi scale and also the necessary events to react to changes of your display first of all very few people know that each form well let's just implement the all create event has a property which is called monitor. And the monitor pro property always refers to the monitor your form is being shown on right now. And monitor has a property called pixels per inch. And that is what you can use in order to calculate a factor based on the 96 DPI 
that you design. So everything that you do on this design surface will be on 96 dpi. So you need to be able to resize the elements that need to be resized with a factor that you can calculate this easily. So you can use pixels per inch and divide it by 96. So if you do the math, if you are on a 100% no high DPI display, you get 96 divided by 96, which makes the factor one. If it's like, in my case, a high DPI display, you would get like something like 1.5 for 150%, or you would get something like two for 200% display. And that way, with this factor, you are able to calculate all the measurements needed for high DPI. So I found out very few developers know that there is on before monitor DPI changed and on after monitor DPI changed. That means the user dragged your form from one monitor to another one. And this, these events can be used to update all the controls that are on the form. So this is the way how you can do it yourself manually using the standard controls that are bundled with Delphi. However, third-party developers, of course, integrated high DPI in their component sets. TMS software is no different there. However, in addition to updating their controls to high DPI, they also took it a step farther and also provided means to use vector images instead of bitmaps to make sure that your user interfaces are never blurry and always contain crystal sharp images. Let me just give you a very simple example how you can get started and then I'll show a couple of more complex examples that have been built with these controls. Let's just design a simple toolbar with buttons. So we have a dock panel. On the dock panel we can add a toolbar and the toolbar then needs buttons. We can use the advanced glow button one and two. So we have two buttons on a toolbar and now the regular step would be you would take your image list and you would assign the image list to each button and then select an image for the corresponding button. Well now since Delphi Rio we have the virtual image list and this replaces the image list and makes sure if there's a high DPI display involved that the images are resized so that they appear at the same size all the time without you having to take care about any pixel density scale or anything. So that is something that is part of Delphi. This is not something that is third party. What is third party is each virtual image list requires an image collection. And this image collection is then used to calculate all the different image sizes. However, at this point, TMS provides the advanced SVG image collection. So you drop the image collection on the form and link it to the virtual image list. Of course, the image collection needs images to be displayed. And here you have the opportunity to load vector images. So in order to provide those images, go to the images property, add a new item. It's a SVG image collection item and data is of course the vector information. So we load and here we can load a vector image. For example, these are vector images of Apple products. Here's the AirPod vector. You see there's full design time support inside of the IDE and another one Let's take, take iBook. Okay, so that's okay. So here are the two vectors. You can even give them a name, iBook and AirPod. And now double clicking the image list, you can say add, and you see the vectors are included. Select all, okay. And now all the images are provided in different resolutions and they're all crystal sharp. So we click OK. And now we link the buttons to the image list, images. And you see, even though this is initially defined as an image list, virtual image list is derived of that class, you can lose it with any Delphi component or Delphi control as before.
then selecting the image index for the picture there is the airpods and there is the macbook okay so this is already really small on my display so what you can do is you can set the size of the virtual image list and this means at 96 dpi so what we're going to do is i'm going to increase it so it becomes really really visible to 64 times 64 and of course tms has properties to auto size the buttons and there you go here's your perfect toolbar crystal sharp and if you run the application you see that this is also the case at runtime i can show this in the recording but if you move this to another display it would automatically be resized for that resolution and pixel density the images would always stay in the center of the toolbar button at this size let's go to one step farther that not only the actual elements are added but you also need to be able nowadays to give the user a look and feel that the user prefers some of your users might actually have a medical condition that prevents them from using bright user interfaces and they they rely on some means that your application is able to use dark toned colors and the vcl offers this with an api that is included in the vcl themes unit and this api allows you to retrieve color and other details on a control basis and that means you can draw your own controls in the selected vcl style and embarcadero provides with delphi styles so you can style your forms automatically this is also supported by tms so tms controls automatically style according to the style that you use inside of your vcl application with a style that is provided by embarcadero or as far as i know there's also third-party providers for vcl styles this is supported as well as you can see right here and there's many many more that are included with delphi and the vcl controls from tms automatically um, are adapt like any other standard control in the vcl but tms takes this even one step farther because delphi is known for red rapid application development what you can do with tms controls is you drop one component on the form and that form is already styled according to your wishes or you can even let the user decide which style is supposed to be used very easily and another important step is that you can do it centralized using an application style component for example with a data module so you have one data module with your application style component and that data module controls all the style components on the different forms so you have to only make one change to one component and your whole application is going to be styled according to those settings and as i already mentioned the user interaction that the user can actually select which style to use can easily be added because that is also included in the controls so if i wanted to add styling to this application i would simply drop the advanced form styler to the form and even at design time i can see the changes by changing the style to for example 2019 gray office style or to the 2010 blue and you see the buttons and the whole form changes according to the style what you can also do is you can simply check auto theme adapt and the style of your application changes to the style that is used on the operating system and as i mentioned adding user interaction is really really easy because the advanced form styler has a combo box property so you add a standard combo box drop it on the form and set the combo box property to that combo box and you see that the styles already appear in the form and this even works at runtime just as is so now you can with the office 2019 white set you can say okay please use windows 10 or let's go back in time 2003 blue and you see that the style changes accordingly 
I mean, this is really a one minute, two minute experience to add styling to your applications just like that without writing any code. And you even have the user interaction in there because you can connect your form styler to a combo box just as easily. Let's look at a more complex example that I built. This example shows a grid control, a track bar, and it gives us the opportunity to browse vectors in a folder and vectors that are included in a zip archive. And I wrote this example to show how easy it is to include these new vector-based image lists into your existing applications. So if I run this example, you see that I can select the icon size that I want to use and I can load a zip archive that contains vectors. And here you see that the icons are added to the grid and I can even change the size and they're immediately resized. I can do the same thing with vector images that are included in a folder and I can also export this to Excel. And there is really no magic happening here. If you look at the source code, it is no more than, and I put it all in one unit, which is probably not a good approach. This is all just a couple of lines of code that I can explain pretty quickly. For example, if you look at how to update the grid, the grid basically shows all the images that are contained inside of an image list. And that is something that you've known how to do for years and years. The only tricky part I would say is, at first, if you get in touch with it, to update the vector images and then to update the image list to read the vectors again. But that is really, really easy. Let me show you how it's done. So to load the images from a folder, now with Delphi, you can use the T directory get files. We want only the SVG vector files. And then you clear the list of all vector images. And then with all the files in the directory, you add a new vector image. And then L vector actually has a wonderful method called load from five. So that's it. You simply load the file into your new vector item and that's it. I added some additional code to specify the file size and all that kind of stuff, but that is information that is not necessary to add the vectors to the image collection. And note the terminology that I used. I said image collection. Of course, the image list needs to regenerate all the images as well because we changed the image collection. And that is what happens in update images. In update images, you simply say the image collection is nil and then you assign vectors again. And with one more property setting, if you look here, vectors, the image list, there is an autofill property. If you set autofill to true, as soon as you reassign the image collection, all the images are added to the image list again. And that's it. And with regards to painting the actual images inside of the grid, that hasn't changed to before because everything is handled by the new mechanism of the virtual image list and the image collection. So the only thing you do in order to draw the image is as before, you add an image of the image list, which has a certain index. And if you iterate all the images on the image list, which I do here, you can simply use the um, iteration variable. And another thing that is really, really striking, there is no calculation for the measurements whatsoever. The only thing you need to calculate is the height of the row, but that needs to be flexible, right? So the size of the images is actually determined by the size that is set in the track bar. The size does not need to be calculated because we simply assign to the image list the width and height for the images that we want them to be at 96 dpi at 100%. However, the height of the row is different. So for that, I get the dpi scale of the display that the grid is on right now. And then as a last line here, I set the row height of the current row that is being iterated right now to the size that I calculated. And how do I calculate the size? Well, it's pretty easy. It's the icon size plus four. And then I need to multiply that because the plus four is for a buffer. And then I multiply it with L factor and L factor is our GPI scale, which is two, if it's a 200% display, 1.5, 150%, I think, 
it's pretty easy to understand. So what that means is if you run this on a non-high DPI display, the L size is going to be neutral in one. So your row heights are basically going to be the height of your icon. But as soon as you go over to a high DPI display, the size is going to be bigger. But remember, because it's a high DPI display, the row height is still going to be the same as on the non-high DPI display. It's ridiculous if you think about it first, but you have to get into this kind of thinking. Otherwise, your applications will not render well on different displays. If you ask yourself, why don't you set the width of the different columns, that would be another thing that we would have to calculate if the control from TMS wouldn't offer auto size. And auto size, of course, takes into account if you are on a high DPI display or not. And that way you only need to call these methods and all the widths are calculated automatically. This example shows that you're not only able to use it at design time, you're also able to use this functionality at runtime. The advantage, of course, if you load your images at design time, they're bundled inside of your EXE. These toolbar images are inside of the EXE and do not have to be deployed separately, whereas these vectors here, of course, are loaded separately, but that is the intent of the application. And of course, before I forget that, the form styler has also been dropped on this form, and this is why the application looks like a standard Windows 10 application because I'm on Windows 10 and I have auto theme adapt checked. So that is all I need to do for my application to be themed perfectly. Going over to another project, and this is the final example, and it just emphasizes the fact that these things can be used with any controls as long as they use image lists or T bitmap or T graphic. You can use the new functionality automatically. So in this example, I even used the same code as in the grid example. The only thing I'm going to use the poly list, which is an amazing control from TMS to create lists of any kind. And here you see vector images once again loaded into a list. This control has been around for a long, long time, but still the image list property can be used with the new vector functionality. And it's all done in code. Nothing is done at design time. I load all the vectors into the image collection from a zip file, and then I assign the image list to the poly list. And the only thing I really assign is an image index out of the image list. And again, the only calculation with a high DPI factor for that is a little bit of something that we need to remember is the fact that we need to set the height of the item, that that needs to take the high DPI into account. Everything else, once again, is done by the image list and all the functionality that has been added to the VCL by Embarcadero. And TMS makes it possible with their vector support that you can use these images on any size and any display density. So they will never look blurry, they will always look sharp. If you like the two examples that I've given, there are two books out there written by me that show Delphi hands-on projects in different scenarios and vectors and user interface design is covered in book number one, whereas book two uses that knowledge to write mapping applications. But yet again, there is lots of VCL knowledge in both of these books. They're available on Amazon in any Amazon store worldwide. So hopefully you enjoyed this overview of the developer experience in the VCL and how it can be improved using third-party controls from TMS software. If you're interested to know more about the VCL controls from TMS software or even other controls for other frameworks, don't hesitate. Go to vcl.tmssoftware.com. Thank you for your interest and have a great conference.